welcome back to Deconstructing with Dawn. This is uh, my second video of the day, but I believe, I believe this is my ancestry update video number 12. Um, all my other videos are mixed in with um, all my channel, on my channel. Um, I do unboxings and reviews and that kind of thing. And I have my ancestry um, saga <laughs> um, as well in the, uh, my channel list. So if you want to find out the entire backstory to what I'm going to be talking about, um, just check out those other videos. Um, basically, when I was 25, my mom told me, your father is not your father, it's this guy. Um, she was just trying to trap this guy because they had been old friends and he was married. She wanted him to divorce his wife. So here I'm giving you a 25 year old baby. I was not his child. Um, so then we reverted back to the original father, which I really never had much of a relationship with anyway. Like probably in my entire life, I've seen him 10 times, but he's my dad, you know? So, um, you know, we started to develop a, a better relationship once I found out that um, she was trying to trick me like that. So um, cut to 20 years later on my 45th birthday, for years, I had told my family that I wanted to get a ancestry or some sort of DNA kit to um, find out who my real father is. Because even though I was like, you know, 90% sure candidate number one was my father, um, you know, there's always that doubt. And there was all forever there was that doubt that um, he wasn't, and he was not. Um, fortunately, the the history of it or what, the investigation of it went by pretty quickly because even though my mom died at 48 um, a few of her old friends are still alive and um, a lady that she ran with at 16 because she had me at she got pregnant at 15 and had me at 16 um, somebody that she used to hang out with who lived with her and that kind of thing um, knew who my real father was and finally came clean to me when I presented this evidence to her that wait a second I'm half Irish. I didn't even know I was 1% Irish. Who is this Irish man? You know? Um, anyway, so she gave me the name of my father and I went on a quest to find him. Couldn't find him, still can't find him. And I've resolved to the fact that I don't care anymore. Um, I just, I can't find him. I can't find him. And his family says he does this. Like they, they, a lot of them haven't seen him in 30 years. The only people that have seen him is, um, an ex-wife has seen him, uh, eight, years ago I think is the time frame but you know another decade is gonna go by and nobody sees him so apparently that's his MO that's what he does he is a POW um, and suffers from schizophrenia schizophrenia and bipolar and is you know therefore has substance abuse problems so he is not wanting to be found and I can't find him like my trail my, my investigative trail has ended in 2008 so I can't find him past then he could be dead he could be living on skid row I do not know but um, I did find out I have five brothers. I have found two of them. Their mother doesn't want me really to contact them at this point because she's afraid that I'll bring the father around and disrupt their lives because apparently our father is incredibly disruptive when he is around, which, you know, if he has such mental illness, he probably is. My mother was an alcoholic, a drug addict. Um, she had bipolar. And so I know how disruptive they can be. But these are my brothers and they're in their 30s, so I think they have the right to make that decision. But for now, I'm obeying the rules. However, what I am here to tell you about beyond that entire long story, which you can look at my videos, like I said, and get the entire story, is that I met my aunt yesterday. Um, my father is one of six kids, uh, three, three boys, three girls. He is the second oldest. Um, there was a girl a boy, a girl, <laughs> a girl, and then two boys. Um, and so I met my aunt, which was, um, there's the girl, my father, and then the next girl. I met my aunt yesterday. Um, we've been talking for the past six months, seven months almost, and um, she'd had some surgery and that kind of thing. And she has such crazy, w weird illnesses, just like I do. I mean, it, like bizarre. Everything's rare, and everything I have wrong with me is like these weird things. So it was, you know, it's nice to commiserate <laughs> and know why I'm such a messed up medical anomaly. You know, so that that was comforting. That was my one of my primary reasons to find out um, I'm losing my vision and. 
she is losing her vision, but in a different way. So even though we're both coincidentally losing our vision, it's not from the same thing. Um, that was one main reason I wanted to find my father is to see if my medical history has anything to do with any of these people. And even though nothing is the same, it's all rare stuff just like me. So I think genetically we just screwed up. Um, anyhow, so I met her. I was got to had a stomach ache. We had planned it for like four or five days. My stomach was killing me. She said she was nervous. And, and as soon as we met, uh, I'm not a hugger, but she hugged me and it was like, no big deal. It was like, I just, it's my aunt, you know, just stopped by and had spent five hours with her. We went out to lunch. Um, and it was like, she was my aunt. It was no, um, no awkwardness or anything and I think she wanted to fill the time like she wanted to give me as much information as she could so she was a you know try, showing me as many pictures as she could and telling me the stories about the family and the um, trying to fill in the names because I have a extensive um, family tree and no more than even they do about histor history but like when you have living people you cannot find a lot of the information about a living person because it's protected under um, certain protection acts so like I didn't maybe know the grandchild's name of somebody or whatever so she just filled in all kinds of information and then what and then we took a selfie at the end actually not really a selfie because her, her friend took a picture of us but um, so I posted it on Facebook and said I met my aunt today and I texted her and said you know do I po do I tag you because at this point um, I think only one other family member even knew who I was and and that was because this great uncle of mine found me through my heritage and saw that we had connection of the same matches and he's like oh well if Mike's your father I'm your great father a great uncle and and, you know, Mike is named after me and all this. My, Mike is my father's name. And um, so he just accidentally found me <laughs> and then saw that I was also friends with my aunt. And But he never put, you know, it wasn't a big, he didn't think it was a big secret or anything. And so, but otherwise, other than them too, nobody knew about me. So I asked her, you know, can I tag you? And she's like, tag away. And then she took the picture and she made an introduction and welcomed me to the family. There's like these um, two family history sites. She posted me on there, introducing me there, and then on her personal site, introducing me there. And everybody was like, what, <laughs> who is this? Um, and you know, welcome me to the family. And you know, I'm this person and that person. I'm, I belong to this person and that person. I mean, it's a huge Irish and English family. Um, like thousands of people. I mean, it's going to, uh, to add these people to the tree that I worked on, it's going to be a lot of work, <laughs> but it was amazing to be welcomed so generously. Like on the flip side of things, my middle child is like, I don't want anything to do with any of this. Um, I called her and told her I had, you know, I met with my aunt. She's like, so she doesn't care. She doesn't want anything to do with meeting new people. She's comfortable in our family, which has just been myself, my husband, and my three kids, because everybody else in my family has died, and my husband's family is kind of distant and, you know, out of sight, out of mind. They really haven't participated much in, in our lives. So she's perfectly fine with what she has in life. She's always been secure in knowing who she is. God, my thyroid is a mess today. Um, anyway, um, so she doesn't want anything to do with it. My oldest was interested and my youngest, who's 23 almost, he's like, who'd you meet? Like, I, I forget that I haven't told them everything. Like they knew that there was a little bit of an issue <laughs> with who, who's, who's mommy's daddy. And, um, <laughs> but they don't care. You know, they're so secure in who they are that, you know, they're letting me do what I gotta do, but um, they're secure. You know, uh, my oldest would like to meet everybody. That's my cat, Sydney. Um, they would like to meet everybody. This is Sydney Marie. This is she's so pretty. She's the most prettiest cat. If she had blue eyes, she'd be perfect. But she has green, so it messes up the color of her gray and white. <laughs> anyway, um, so my son would just go with the flow. He doesn't care. He is honored to be found out that he's Irish. Actually, um, since my last video, I had my DNA broken down. Like, I'm sorry I'm all over the place. I know that annoys some of you and don't watch my videos because I'm so scatterbrained. And I've said before, I have a memory problem. And I have this thyroid thing that, like, makes you just... Um, you get brain fog. And so if something enters my mind, I've got to get it out of my mouth or it never will. But... 
DNA wise, um, I had my, um, D my raw DNA broken down by this um, G G G oh, whatever, geneal not a genealogist, but whatever. He broke it down and like per strand, um, I am one like without like more than anything, like let's say you have 20, I don't know how many strands you have, but let's say you have 25 strands, um, 20 of them are back to Viking Scan Scandinavia. So my huge amount of um, Irish in me along with the um, Western European is all Scandinavian and like five um, strands or whatever are um, German, which my grandfather's family is German. German and, and uh, British, uh, English it says, or English or British or something like that. Um, anyway, so like I'm severely Viking, like I'm Scandinavian left and right. <laughs> and I didn't even know I was at all, so that's crazy. Anyway, so I don't even know what I was saying before that and I'm, I apologize. But I met her, she's introduced me to everybody. Um, my new aunts have befriended me, because now there's those, there's those other people that are the aunts. They've befriended me on Facebook, and uh, my family is growing by the hour. <laughs> and I'm okay with not knowing where he is. Um, I can't find him anyway, so it doesn't matter. She, nobody knows where the three oldest sons of his are, though. He had three older sons with a wife, and then he had two more, which the two more are in their 30s, or 28 and 32. So, I, and I know where they are, and I've, I've seen the one, and, and you know, I've not met, my, met him or anything, but I've seen him. Um, so, those older three are, you know, probably in their 40s or nearby, in, and then the age of 40, and I can't find them. Um, so my interest is knowing my five brothers because I've never I've had stepbrothers, but I've never had real brothers. Um, and I have two half sisters. So my my main goal is if I have to give up the search for my father to be re closer to my brothers, um, I I already said that's what I would do because he doesn't want to be found. He doesn't know me, and I don't. And I, even though I feel he is owed as a veteran, you know, POW, um, he is owed all that he can get for treatment, you know, and I would love to have helped him and that's my job in life. I'm the oldest anyway. And so my job is to always try to fix everything, but I can't find him. I can't fix him. So what am I supposed to do? Um, so with that said, if the, you know, caveat to meeting the other two that are local um, is to not be connected to my father, then that's the choice I'm making. And I know that sounds bad, but I've thought it over. I've discussed it with my husband um, and with my aunt, and I just hope to have a relationship with my brothers. Um, and I hope I can find the other three, which are a complete dead end. Like nobody, other than knowing the name of one of them, nobody knows anything about them. So, you know, <laughs> anyhow. That's my story. I met my aunt. It was, she was welcoming, and um, my heart was full yesterday. And like literally, every hour that goes by, my family tree is just growing, and that is amazing. And I wish every one of you that are going through this ancestry 23 and me I wish that every one of you find some sort of connection on those trees and connect with the humans that are there um, you know it's one thing to trace your tree back 1200 years that's great which I have done but it's another thing to meet these people that are attached to those names and um, there's nothing like it and even though I'm good with who I am um, they just add to me and I like that um, thank you so much for watching all my videos, and I'll update you next time. Maybe the next time I update you, ooh, the cat just moved it. Maybe the next time I update you, it will be because I meet my brother. That would be one of the brothers. <laughs> um, or find the other ones, I don't know. Um, anyhow, thank you so much for always watching and all the comments. I cannot see... I can see what you guys write, but I cannot respond. I've said that before, I cannot respond um, because when you go to open up the thing to respond, the writing is so tiny, I can't see to respond. So I see everything that you guys tell me and I appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much and good luck to all of you.